Hello and welcome to a tutorial on bivariate data analysis as part of the Queensland General Math Syllabus. Uh, the goal of this topic, as I have written in front of you there, is to analyse data from two variables. That's what bivariate means. Bi uh, meaning two and variate referring to the variables. So you are comparing uh, data from two variables to identify any patterns that suggest the presence of an association or relationship between them. Okay, so I'm going to start by unpacking those two things there that I have underlined. So we'll start with this idea that there are two variables. Okay, if you have two variables, we can break them down into an explanatory variable and a response variable. Now, if you have any kind of science background, you may be more familiar with the terms independent and dependent variables. Same thing, we use different terminology in the general math syllabus, okay? So the explanatory variable is the variable that is used to explain or predict a difference in the response variable. And the response variable is changing in response to the explanatory variable. Okay, so uh, the explanatory variable is what is uh, used to explain a response in the response variable. So it kind of makes sense why that language is used. So to help explain that, I've got this little example here. Okay, Amy decided to bake a cake. She put a thermometer in the cake and started a timer. She noticed that the longer the cake was in the oven, the more the temperature of the cake rose. So in this example, the temperature of the cake is the response variable because it's responding to the time that it spends in the oven. The longer it's in the oven, the hotter it gets. Uh, the amount of time in the oven is the explanatory variable since it can explain the temperature change of the cake. Okay, so hopefully that helps you to understand the difference between an explanatory variable and a response variable. Now, for me, what I do if I've got two variables in front of me, I say it one way with one explaining the other, and then I say it the other way round. And one way usually sounds ridiculous, the other way starts making sense. So if we looked at, for example, the relationship between height and mass, in a population of people, we would say that in general, the taller someone is, the more they will weigh. So height is explaining the change in mass, okay? Whereas if you say it the other way around, that the person's mass is explaining a change in their height, doesn't make any sense. So see what I mean? Say it one way, then say it the other way. One will make sense, one will not make sense. That's my pro tip for you. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at now is this word association, okay? Because we have to be careful with the language we use when we're doing bivariate data analysis, okay? So just because we have identified a pattern in the data does not mean uh, causation or that one of these variables is causing a change in the other. Okay, so we have to say that there is an association between the two variables, but no more than that. We cannot say anything about the source or the cause of the association. There's several reasons that could explain an association that are not causal. We could, there could just be a coincidence that these two variables are related to each other, or it could be that there are other variables involved that are confounding or confusing the situation, okay? Could be that there's another variable that is causing a change in both. And we wouldn't know that. All we would know is that there's a pattern between the two data, uh, two variables that we are observing, okay? So it's very important that if you see questions on the exam that use the word cause or causal relationship, that you be very wary that this is probably a trap, okay? 
we cannot conclude that uh, there is a causal relationship between two variables, only an association. We could say that there could be or there might be a causal relationship, but we don't know uh, until there are further studies done, things like uh, randomized control trials, but that's a whole other topic that we won't go into. Okay, so keep an eye out for that word. A lot of people accidentally read this as casual relationship, but it is causal relationship. Okay. All right, so thinking back to year 11, uh, unit two, where you would have learned about univariate data analysis, uh, you hopefully would have learned that data can come in different types. Now, it's important that we know these types because depending on the type of data you have can change what uh, tool you use to analyze the data. Okay, so we need to be able to spot the difference between categorical data and numerical data. Now, it is exactly as they say, categorical data is data that is in categories. Numerical data is data that is numbers. Nice and easy to remember. So an example of categorical data might be if we were doing a survey about how students travel to school. Do they take a bike, car? Do they walk, bus? Okay, we might gather some data about, we might have a number about the frequency of that. We might say six people bike, uh, 20 people car, et cetera, et cetera. But that's just the frequency that this was answered. Okay, so the answer itself, the data itself is a category. Okay, whereas numbers is where you're either measuring or counting. So for example, measuring the height of students. Okay, and you can see some numbers there. Now, if you want to know what to do with numerical data, check out part two of uh, this series. I will link it in the info card and in the description. So check that out. But for today, we are just going to look at categorical data. Okay, what to do if your data is in categories. Okay, and the answer is two-way frequency tables is what we are going to learn about today. Okay, so let's uh, start with an example. Okay, so a sports carnival at a local primary school had 125 attendees where they were given a free snack with a choice of either savory or sweet. Of the 115 students, 28 chose savory snacks while two of the teachers chose sweet snacks. Okay, so that's the information we've been given. Okay, uh, what we can do is turn this into a table, a two-way frequency table. Two-way because it's going to have rows and columns and frequency table because we are going to use the information we've been given about the frequencies to come up with our answer, our analysis, look for patterns. Okay, so we need to set up rows and columns here. Okay, now there is some method to which variable gets to be the rows and which variable needs, gets to be the columns. Okay, so start by identifying what your two variables are. Okay, so our first variable is the, I guess, type of attendee. And our options are teachers, and students. And our second variable is what kind of snack they chose. And we had savory or sweet. Okay, and we want to see if there's an association between those two variables. Now, Remember what I said about identifying which is the explanatory variable and which is the response variable. Okay, I'm going to let you have a think about it. Pause the video, write down your answer, and then unpause the video and I will tell you what the correct answer is. Okay, so hopefully you've written down your answer, actually committed to one. Uh, the answer is this is the explanatory variable 
this is the response variable, okay? So it's more likely that the type of attendee, either being or teacher or a, or a student, which is probably related to age, uh, influences whether you choose a savory snack or a sweet snack, okay? Not the other way around. Having a savory or sweet snack does not determine whether you are a teacher or a student, okay? So say it one way, say it the other way, it'll make more sense that way. Okay, so now that we know which is the explanatory variable, which is the response variable, we're now going to construct our table. Okay, so when you're setting a table up from scratch, uh, it's convention to make the explanatory variable the column and the response variable the row. It's not always like this, okay? I have seen, seen some examples even on uh, QCAA uh, sample assessment where they're the other way around. But if you're constructing one from scratch, I would highly recommend setting it up this way, okay? So uh, we want our explanatory variable to define the columns and our response variable to define the rows. Nice and easy to remember with the double R there. So I'm going to make like that, and then draw some columns in. Okay, and then I'm going to make savory versus sweet here. Okay, and there are our rows. Now, we also need row and column totals or row and column sums, okay, sum meaning total, okay, so you've got to have a total of the columns and we also need a total for the rows, like so. Okay, so now that we have our table set up, we can start inputting the information, okay? So we know that there were 125 people in total, so we can put that there, okay? And we know of the 115 students, so write down where you think that should go. Okay, so 115 students in total. 28 chose savory snacks. Now write down where you think that should go. Right there. And then it says two of the teachers chose sweet snacks. So write down where you think that should go. And here it is, okay? Now, based on this information, we can fill in the gaps here, okay? Because we know that students plus teachers together should equal 125. So if 125 in total and 115 of those were students, how many teachers must there have been? Okay, 125 take away 15 is 10. Okay, and if we know 10 of the teach out of the 10 teachers, two of them chose sweet, how many must have chosen savory? Write your answer. Okay, so now we have that. Now we can get a row total or a row sum for savory. So 28 plus eight, we would put 36 here. Okay, and now we know that out of the 115 students in total, 28 chose savory. How many sweet choices must there have been? The answer is 87, which gives us 89 people choosing sweet snacks in total, okay? So as I said, we call these the row totals or sums. They call them row sums in the syllabus and column sums in the syllabus, but I just think totals sound much nicer. 
Okay, and here's our column totals slash sums. Okay, and this is our overall total. Okay, so that would be how many people are involved in the study in total. Okay, all right. So now we've got our data all nicely organized in our two-way frequency table. However, it is hard from this data to draw any conclusion because we don't have equal number of teachers and students, okay? So we could say, for example, oh, look, more students chose savory snacks than teachers. Therefore, students must like savory snacks more than teachers, okay? We can't really do that because we have to look at it proportionally because there are more students than teachers in the study. So once you have your two-way frequency table, we can turn it into a percentage table. Okay, where we take all of these values and we turn them into percentages. Okay, now for this one, we can drop our row totals. We only need our column totals. This is why it's much better to put the explanatory variable in the column total because then your percentages can just be um, based on the column total okay so redraw this table but ditch that last column there And you can put a total here because it's good to check that our values are actually adding up to 100, which they should if you've done it correctly. Okay, so there's our table. Now, so in this first uh, cell here, it is 28 students chose a savory snack out of 115 students okay so let's do that as a percentage so that should be 28 divided by 115 and then we multiply 100 to turn it into a percentage so that gives us 24 point and i'm just going to round to two decimal places here okay but you can choose to round differently if you wanted to. You could round that to a whole number. You could round it to one decimal place as long as it is rounded correctly. Okay. The next one is 87 students choosing a sweet snack out of 115 students. And we get 75.65%. And if you add those two together, they should add up to 100%. So that's a good way of checking to make sure you've got it right. Now, sometimes because of rounding issues, you do end up with one being 99 and one being 101. That's fairly normal just because of rounding uh, errors, like just not errors, but like the way we round can sometimes tip that one plus one minus one. Um, but that's okay. As long as you're close to 100, either 99 or 101 or 100, then you know you've done that right. Okay. All right. Now back to teachers. We've got eight out of 10, which uh, is 80%. And then two out of 10, which is 20% which of course also adds to 100. We know we've done that right, okay? It is possible to get uh, two-way tables with multiple sort of rows and columns, okay? Uh, we could have divided up, we could have gotten rid of teachers and had each year level individually put here. We could have had multiple snack options, okay? So that's why 
you can get more complicated tables. So it's good to have this checking stage here. Okay, so that's our percentaged two-way table. Okay, so now we need to draw a conclusion. Okay, so can you identify any patterns in this table here? Okay, so look at the students who like savoury snacks versus the teachers who like savoury snacks. Look at the students who like sweet snacks versus the teachers that like sweet snacks. Is there a difference? Can you see a pattern? Okay, so I would like everyone to write down a conclusion. You need to justify your answer with evidence. Okay, evidence takes the form of quoting some data from the table. So I should actually see some percentages in your response. Okay, so pause the video, write down your answer, justifying it with evidence. Go. Okay, so here's my answer. Okay, I'm just going to read it out to you because I prepared it earlier. It says, in this sample of 125 attendees at a sports carnival, a higher proportion of teachers chose savoury snacks, 80%, and a higher proportion of students chose sweet snacks, approximately 76%. This indicates that there is an association between the type of attendee and snack choice. Okay. Now, you could have said that the other way around. You could have said uh, only a few students like savoury snacks, whereas only a few teachers like sweet snacks. You could do that as well if you liked, as long as you provided evidence. Okay. So, did you also notice the kind of language I was using in there? I said... This data indicates that there is an association between the two variables. I did not say that um, being a teacher causes them to like savoury snacks. Okay, we don't know if that's the case. Maybe there's something else about being a teacher that makes them like savoury snacks. Maybe there was something about the day and the conditions they were working in that made them choose savoury snacks, whereas students chose sweet snacks. Okay. There's lots of reasons why that could have happened. So you have to make sure that you're using the correct language. I should see the keyword association in there or relationship or pattern, something like that. Okay. If you have any questions about that, pop it into the comments and I will check them. But what we will do now is a few practice questions. Okay. So here's one from the publicly available sample external exam. It's paper one, which is the short response section. Okay, so I'd like you to have a look at this question. Let's pause the video and I want you to have a go at answering it as best you can and then I will, you can unpause the video and I will go through the answers with you. Okay, go for it. Okay, so presumably you've done that. So we have uh, students being surveyed regarding their attitudes towards dancing and swimming. And we need to calculate how many students enjoy swimming. OK, so this seems like an absolute value here, not a proportion. OK, so I can see uh, just from the table, he is enjoying swimming. OK, so 33 plus 132 would give us a row total of 165. Okay, so we could just say 165 students enjoy swimming. Okay, it's just a one mark question, so they'd just be looking for that one answer there. Okay, how many students were surveyed? Okay, so to do that, we're going to need all of our totals. Okay. So we can also add the row total for not enjoying swimming, which would be 110 plus 58, which is 168. Okay. And then we, sorry, that should be an eight, not a five. Uh, and then we can add those two values together and we get 333. 
Now, you also could have done that with the column totals. If you did it that way, it should be 143 and this should be 190. Add those two together and you get 333. Okay, so the answer here is 333 students were surveyed. Now, once again, it's only a one mark question, so we just need our one number answer, okay? Uh, the next one, however, has two marks, so we need to show enough working for two marks, okay? So, the next question, calculate the percentage of students who enjoy both activities. Express your answer correct to two decimal places. So, how many students enjoy both? So people who enjoy dancing and enjoy swimming, it's this number here. Out of 333 students in total, I get 9.91%. I've rounded to two decimal places, obviously, uh, but you may have chosen differently as long as it is rounded correctly. I just tend to default to two decimal places, personally. Now, you don't necessarily have to write these full sentences like I'm writing, but I always find that it helps me to make sure that I've actually answered the question because you'd be surprised how easy it is to uh, accidentally miss something. Okay, so that one was from paper one. And if you see anything on paper one, you know it's simple, familiar questions. Okay, so that was an example of simple, familiar questions. However, this one is from paper two. So we can assume that it is uh, more complex, okay? And you can see that we're gonna have to construct our own table, okay? So what I'd like you to do is pause the video, read through it, have a go at setting up your own table, and then unpause the video and we will uh, look at the answers. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to do that. If you got stuck, I'll give you a hint first, okay? First of all, figure out which of the two variables is the explanatory variable and which is the response variable, okay? So we've got the number of hours of practice, okay? And the other variable we have is their year level at school. Okay, so we've got those two uh, variables. Now, think about, is it more likely that being in year seven or year 12 would influence how much practice you do? Or does how much practice you do influence whether you're in year seven or year 12? Okay, so one of those sounds correct, one of those sounds ridiculous. Okay, so which one is explaining the variation or the difference in the other. Okay, so if you haven't figured that out, pause the video, write it down, and then unpause it for the answer. Okay, so this is the explanatory variable, and this is our response variable. Response needs to be the row, uh, explanatory variable needs to be the column. So your table should be set up like this. Okay, and uh, what were our examples? Two hours or less, uh, two to four hours, more than four hours. I should say more than two hours up to four and then more than four hours. Okay. So you can use symbols if you want to, but I'm just going to write this in words. move this up so I've got a little bit more room. It's 
something like that, and then total here. Okay, you could have done that with symbols like this. Oh, that didn't look nice. There we go. That kind of thing. Um, but I'm not going to fuss around with those for now. Why add to the, uh, oopsie, why add to the uh, extra brain power that you need? I can't see why you can't just write it in words instead of using the symbols. Okay, let's add our information now. So 15 students practiced for two hours or less in year seven, 53 and four, and then for year 12, two, 11 and four. Okay, so let's get our column totals. Okay, so uh, we've got uh, the other way, 15 plus 2 is 17, 53 plus 11 is 64, and 4 and 4 is 8. And then finish up your last one there. Okay, 89. Yeah, we weren't told anything like that. Oh, we were told 72 and 17 though. There it is, which works out. We're happy. Okay, so now what I want you to do, if you haven't already done so, turn that into a percentage table. Okay, so pause the video if you haven't already done so, turn it into a percentage table. Obviously, a ruler is going to make this look nice and neat, so I would encourage that you use a ruler. Okay, so let's work out our percentages. So our first cell here would be 15 divided by 72 times 100. I'm just rounding everything to two decimal places, like so. The next one would be 53 divided by 72. And then the last one should be that. And then our next one and then the last one, 4 divided by 17. Okay, and then of course you can check to make sure they all add up to 100. So do that if you haven't already done so. Lovely. Okay, and then our last step is to identify if there are any patterns any in the data. Okay, so I want you to write a conclusion because what does this say? Determine any patterns that suggest the presence of an association providing reasons for your conclusion. Okay, so you need some evidence in there as well. So if you haven't already done so, pause the video again and write down your conclusion with some evidence. Go. Okay, so my answer is as follows. It says, the data suggests that there is an association between year level and hours of practice. It shows that older students practice more. Approximately 24% of year 12s practice more than four hours per week, whereas only 6% of year 7s do. 21% of year 7s practice for two hours or less compared to only 12% of year 12s. Okay, so I gave a bunch of different evidence there to support my conclusion. Okay.
All right, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments and I will keep an eye out for them. Good luck with your studies.